Kiora. My name is Peter Vertanos and I'm a senior developer with CubeWorks Incorporated. I'm making this presentation as a member of the consulting ware team that is facilitating the 2012 Canterbury Plugfest in Christchurch, New Zealand. The topic of this presentation is standards and interoperability past, present and future at the Open Geospatial Consortium or OGC. The focus of this presentation is about standards that should influence the evolution of a spatial data infrastructure or SDI. Specific characteristics that are important when deploying a sustainable SDI include scalability, interoperability, and availability, and we will touch on all of these topics in this presentation. Some of the questions that we will try to answer include why do we need standards, why OGC, how are OGC specifications developed and how do they evolve? What OGC standards are relevant to an SDI? In the second part of this presentation, we will look at where OGC specifications are going. So why do we need standards? Anyone viewing this presentation probably already has a good idea about why standards are important. But before we get into that, I draw your attention to the quotation in the lower right of the slide. The lack of interoperability costs the U.S. economy $16 billion in 2004. So why standards? We need geodata standards for publishing, accessing, mapping, processing, and exchanging geodata on the web. We also need standards to enable interoperability in a heterogeneous vendor environment, which is typically the case in an SDI. So we know we need standards, but why OGC standards? Well, in two words, consensus and rubber meets the road. OGC, formed around about 1998, is an industry consortium with 450 plus members in industry, government, and academia. It is a consensus organization, meaning that its standards are developed by consensus among its members. Members discuss, debate, argue about a standard until a consensus position is achieved. That consensus is encapsulated in the form of a standard. Unlike other standards bodies, however, what really distinguishes OGC is that the rubber meets the road. What I mean by that is that OGC hosts testbeds before, during, and after standards are published in order to improve interoperability and implementability. As you can see from the graphic, OGC runs several programs as part of its day-to-day -day operations. These programs include the Interoperability Program, which manages the testbed process I was describing earlier, the Standards Program that manages the progress of standards documents through the OGC, the Compliance Program that allows implementers of OGC standards to test their implementations for compliance, and finally, the marketing and communication program that is largely responsible for OGC's success in liaising with other standards organizations for the purpose of geo-enabling the world. These other standards bodies include OASIS, ISO, IETF, just to name a few. So what does it mean to be an OGC standard? OGC takes the view that vendors' implementations are black boxes. OGC only cares about what happens at the interface of these black boxes and what messages are passed across the wire between the black boxes. In this web-enabled era, the interfaces that OGC defines are exposed as web services. So OGC defines web service standards and message encoding standards. Now that we have a good idea about why we need standards and why, in particular, OGC standards, let's take a look at how OGC standards evolve by looking at how the first OGC Web Services standard was developed and how it evolved. In this case, we are looking at the Web Map Service, or WMS, standard. 
I'm not going to get into all the details of the slide, but I want to point out a few salient points. First, the yellow boxes represent test beds, and as you can see, the WMS standard was the product of the first web map testbed held in the late 1990s. After the first version, additional testbeds fed into the standard and continue to do so to this day. It bears mentioning that OGC forms standards working groups whenever a sufficient number of change requests have been gathered to warrant a new version of a standard. Change requests are gathered through the testbed process, but also from external sources such as people and organizations implementing the standards. In many cases, an OGC standard, such as the WMS, also spins off other documents that become OGC standards. In this diagram, the white boxes represent such spin-offs, and from WMS the spin-offs include the OWS Common Standard and the SLD Standard. In 2005, it should be noted that the OGC WMS Standard also became an ISO Standard. This slide shows the evolution of the Web Feature Service, or WFS. Once again, testbeds have been an integral part in developing the WFS standard, and although not shown here, the WFS has been part of almost all OGC OWS testbeds. A number of important spin-off documents developed along with the WFS, and these include the Stateless Catalog Discussion Paper, which ev eventually became the CSW standard, and the GML SF standard, which is a simplified version of GML. In addition, a number of profiles of the WFS standard have been developed, of which the Gazetteer profile is of particular interest to those deploying an SDI. This slide shows the evolution of the catalog standard, which is one of the earliest OGC standards. Although not hooked into the diagram because of limited real estate, the yellow boxes in the upper right part of the slide are meant to illustrate that the catalog standard has been a part of every OGC testbed since OWS3. The catalog standard does not define specific information models for the catalog. Instead, profiles are used to hook specific information models into the standard. Some of the profiles that have been developed include the EBRIM profile, the ISO profile, the FGDC profile, and the Earth Observation profile. In order to support interoperability among profiles, the CSW standard defines a small core of queryables based on Dublin Core. Having looked at the WMS, WFS, and CSW, what other standards are available for deployment in an SDI? This slide lists a stack of mature OGC web service standards and information encoding standards that should be considered when deploying an SDI. Of course, we have the WMS, WFS, and CSW, but we also have the WCS for deploying coverages onto the web, the WMTS for deploying web map tiles like Google and Bing on the web, the WPS or web processing service can be used to deploy algorithms or geoprocessing methods onto the web, and underpinning all of these web services is the OWS Common Standard, which defines common elements that are used among the other standards. In order to support a common predicate encoding or query language, the OGC has defined the filter encoding standard, which is used by the WFS, the CSW, and by SLG. The symbology encoding and styled layer descriptor standards allow interoperable styling rules to be defined. GML, or the Geography Markup Language, is the lingua franca of OGC and defines a standard way of describing geographic information. 
Finally, and not many people are aware of this, but KML is also an OGC standard. At this point, we have looked at the past and present of interoperable standards of OGC. In the next part of this presentation, we will look forward into the future.